Hey up lads and lasses, Damfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Now, today it dropped, finally, we get to have a look at the new uh, carrier, the uh, Marshall Crooks. So, as you can see behind me, we're in the trade area. If you click on the event, and in the event it'll say, oh, the, uh, the Crooks is available, click go to, and it'll tell you where you can go pick these up. Um, I'm not sure if these are all different, but considering that I'm the only one liaising with this station, it uh, kind of makes me think that they are different for each person. Maybe it's just your closest uh, point. Uh, not entirely sure on that, because I, I am docked like here, so you know, it could just be something to that. Anyway, let's jump into it and let's have a look. So here we are, we're inside the trading dock now, and as you can see at the very top, limited time sale, Southern Cross Marshall class aircraft carrier, service limit zero of three, which means you can only pick up three. Someone to note quickly is three of them. These ones seem to have certain amount of upgrades, and these cost Proxima. Now, they are temporary. Highly, highly recommend you do not pick these up at the current moment. I've asked the devs um, a couple of questions, say, like, why? And, um, you know, the, the, the typical sort of why. Why why do these cost Proxima? The temporary blueprints, this shouldn't be, you know, sh it shouldn't be there. Anyway, so these are the base. This is the base variant, I believe. So this is what you'll get if you pick it up from a box as bog standard. As we can see here, it carries six large aircraft, uh, large fighters. So that's really good. That's, you know, six feet of bees or anything like that. That puts it um, about on par with the base CV3K, but because it has this white flashing integrated armory, which has this giant ion cannon on the front here, which is uh, very cool looking. Just so you know, this is my favorite ship looking ship in the game now. <laughs> It has taken the spot. I thought it might, it did. So, we got 450 damage per hit. It's energy based. It's an eight second duration with an eight second uh, damage frequency. That means it ticks eight times doing 450 each of those eight times. Cooldown of 12 seconds with an eight second lock on time. It's a very powerful uh, cannon to be honest with you. This is, you know, this is up there with IOs and stuff like that, damage uh, DPM wise. So this is an IO with carrying capabilities, which is nuts when you really think about it. Especially because, you know, six heavies, uh, six large fighters is pretty damn decent. It's uh, priority targets, battleships, carriers, auxiliary ship, cr battle cruisers, and cruisers. What is also nice though is this secondary weapon target small ships it's not anti-aircraft so it doesn't have anti-aircraft capabilities which isn't too much of an issue it does you know potentially hit aircraft but its priorities are destroyers frigates with 120 damage per second firing two rounds times one there's a pair of these with a five second cooldown and a four second lock on time this is substantial damage versus destroyers and frigates so this is something to note as well that it's got a very nice mixed role of being able to quite nicely hit uh, frigates and destroyers with its secondary weapon with its primary weapon hitting large ships with an energy based weapon so that's really quite good indeed on to top it off as we mentioned earlier we have the large uh, carrier capacity of six so that's six fetus bees six stingrays six bullfrogs or six of any other fighters that are below those sizes only four enhancement systems here, which isn't amazing, but it's not bad. Has this additional armory amplification, which is actually really damn nice and gives 15% uh, damage to Antonius aircraft. Antonius aircraft are Vetus Bs, so bear that in mind. You've just instantly buffed your Vetus Bs damage by 15% just by putting them on the ship let alone, you know, some of the other variants that you could potentially put on here. Vetus A's, for example, are really quite decent as well, especially for system damage. So 
This is just quite a nice overall ship. It's got the same movement speed and the same uh, warp speed as the CV-3K, which is a high speed carrier, but apparently it's not. It's just a standard speed carrier now because this thing's as fast as it, which uh, kind of mitigates the CV-3K's viability quite a bit, especially when we go look at one of the more upgraded versions. So the second version you get here, it drops literally just the uh, large hangar for six core vets, which is also very, very nice. Six vets, fantastic. Uh, not much more to say about this. It's pretty much identical. Something to note as well, it's roughly about the same HP as a CV-3K, but it has got only 30 less armor, which in my opinion, isn't enough to sort of go, well, the CV-3K has got better armor, therefore it's going to be better at mitigating damage. That 30 armor is really not going to do much because uh, what shoots these are either energy-based or have big guns, and they're not going to care too much about 30 armor. Further upgraded on the third one, this has just got 51 tech points pumped into it. Again, it's got the six large... Uh, large carriers and we have the heavy ion it's got a few upgrades here cooldown and i believe that's damage uh, as well hitting 495 damage plus 49 damage so it's somewhat boosted as well so as you can see it's boosted its damage up by about 4000 dpm which is pretty damn nice and again a little bit extra damage here on the dual cannon battery system as well the fact that they're both incorporated into one system means when you're upgrading that you're also upgrading your anti uh, small ship damage and your anti-aircraft damage so that's pretty damn decent as well uh also upgraded on here we have some damage for the aircraft uh that'd be probably like 10 percent or something like that so now you're looking at 15 percent on your vetus bees or just 10 percent uh sorry 25 percent on your vetus or your antonius aircraft or just 10 percent on anything else and armor is pushed up a little bit here with uh it pushing 240 armor which is actually pretty reasonable for an aircraft carrier we then move on to number four where Again, this is more or less the same as the last one. It's just swapped out the uh, hangar dock for a Corvette dock. And again, it's pumped the damage there. So nothing extra to say about that. This is the really interesting one. This is carrying six large fighters and four medium fighters. Bear in mind that you could swap those large fighters for six Corvettes. So you could have six vets and four medium fighters, which is actually really nice because this adds the additional... Uh, system here the medium hangar this one is why i think it may just flat out replace the cv3k and it's due to the fact that at max a cv3k carries 11 fighters this is carrying 10 but it's got a lot more damage potential on its own so even if you lose your fighters it's still got that ion cannon. It's still got those small guns. It can still dish out a lot of damage. What will be interesting to see is which is the main system. I believe it is the ion cannon. So if this gets hit by system damage, it knocks the ion cannon out and not the hangers. Whereas if CV3K gets hit by system damage, it knocks the hangers out, which can be very dodgy because you can just flat out lose all of your uh, aircraft pretty quickly that way. So... This is pretty absurd, I think, um, and it will flat out replace the CV-3K. It necessarily doesn't replace the Solar Whale, and that's due to the fact I believe the Solar Whale goes up to about 15 aircraft. That's five more than this can carry, so it has that potential of bringing more aircraft in. Also, the weapon on the Solar Whale is not bad, and let's not forget the Solar Whale is just tanky. It will sit and tank for ages. So also to note, this is back row. So I wonder how that will work with the iron cannons, because most of the time you see that the medium or front row, uh, with the rear row being sort of saved for carriers and missiles and torps, you don't tend to see much in the way of direct fire on the back row. So it'll be interesting to see how this actually attacks and if it is forced to attack front rows and stuff like that. But yeah, this is potentially the best in slot carrier 
due to the fact that it's, you know, big damage energy weapon. It's carrying at the moment in this configuration 10 aircraft. And yeah, it, it, it's just extremely versatile. One issue maybe is the fact that this is says active service of zero of three here, which means you can only have three max, but that could be because it's a temporary uh, blueprint because the CV3K is the same. If you dock to the CV3K dock, it will only, only let you build three as opposed to five. So when we finally get these dropped in boxes and in the research agreement, I will be going for it because I think this will be extremely powerful, uh, especially if you can get plenty of tech points and stuff into it and get these unlocks like the additional hangers and stuff like that. This could certainly replace uh, the likes of a CV3K. And again, to an extent, it will replace a solar whale as well. It may not have the carry capacity or the tank, but bringing its own damage in is extremely useful and extremely versatile, as mentioned. Anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more sci-fi stuff, do check out the uh, sort of look I did at some sci-fi uh, strategy games coming out this year. Really, really cool. They're all by indie devs and... They're just going to be really amazing. Uh, Falling Frontier, Capital Command, um, what were the other ones? Terror and Victor, and uh, something else that I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> anyway, do check that video out. It's really interesting. It's a lot of fun, and yeah, get to see what's coming out later this year. Have a good one, and I'll catch you next time.